Reading a book is one of life's great pleasures, allowing readers to learn new things, enter new worlds, or even experience life in a brand new way. But there are some books that should probably just stay on the shelf. From an 11th century handbook on magic to an undecipherable Latin treatise, here are 50 mysterious books you should avoid reading at all costs. Before we begin, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. With that being said, let's begin. <sighs> Number 15. Picatrix. It may sound like an adorable little Pokemon, but the Picatrix is actually a pretty dangerous read. Dating back to the 11th century, the Picatrix is a 400-page book filled with a collection of texts focusing on magic and astrology. Numerous interpreters have summarized the book as a handbook of talismanic magic filled with texts that no doubt influence many people to go in search of their star sign. Well, okay, maybe not. The contents of the book itself look like something straight out of Harry Potter. Each page filled with curious images and carefully crafted text. Of course, much like the books within Harry's world, it was believed that this text, if used correctly, would allow the reader to harness and channel the power of the cosmos entirely through magic. With a claim that bold, it's hard to imagine that Hogwarts wouldn't have a copy hanging around the library. In addition to the multitude of spells, the book explores everything from numerology to potions, and one section even explores how to build cities through the power of astrology. I'm not even sure which star sign is capable of that, but my money's on Capricorn. Nobody actually knows who wrote the Picatrix, making it something of a magical mystery. Many scholars have concluded that the primary author was likely an 11th century astronomer who took an interest in magical research conducted throughout the 8th and 9th centuries, but there's simply no way to know for sure. All we know is that this is the handbook for magic, and also astrology and city building. Number 14. The Book of Soiga. In 1582, occult enthusiast John Dee somehow discovered a near incomprehensible book of magic. Inside, the pages were lined with over 4,000 randomly placed letters, making for an indecipherable code that Dee suspected were concealing a message. Luckily, Dee's friend Edward Kelly happened to have a mirror that allowed him to speak with archangels. Because, I mean, who doesn't? Helping Dee to speak directly with the archangel Uriel for help. Unfortunately, Uriel couldn't help crack the code, claiming that the archangel Michael was the only one who knew its secret. The book claimed that the secrets contained within the code would bring death in two and a half years, a threat so specific that you can't help but be a little freaked out by it. But with no new information from the archangel, Dee simply made one note, Alderaya. After his death, the book was lost, as often happens to occult sinister books. In 1994, historian Deborah Harkness was working on a dissertation in California that focused on John Dee. Having stumbled upon frequent references to the Book of Soiga, Harkness went to London in search of the mysterious book. In the National Library, she found the book under its full name, Aladaria Sive Soiga Voco. Still, the mystery behind those 40,000 letters was unsolved, and probably for the best, given the instant death in two and a half years thing. Enter James A. Reeds, a mathematician who actually managed to decrypt the Book of Soiga through the use of cryptology. Of course, given the warning that the secrets would bring death in two and a half years, it would be irresponsible of us just to blurt it out. Okay, the secret is... Number 13. Tomino's Hell. The Japanese have always had a way with horrifying stories, and this one is no different. Written in 1919, Tomino's Hell is a poem written by Yomota in Huiko, and it comes with one hell of a curse. The legend goes that you should only read the story with your mind, as reading it out loud ensures that tragic things will happen. How tragic, you ask? We don't actually know. None of us are brave enough to try it. The story was incredibly popular on the Japanese forum 2 channel, with many taking photos or recording themselves reading the poem aloud as proof that they did take on the challenge that may result in tragic things. And while many users claim nothing actually came of the reading, many disappeared from the boards without confirming their individual results. While many skeptics will simply suggest that those people got sick or had things to do, there's always the potential for something even more sinister. What's most interesting about this particular story is that the curse doesn't seem to affect the original Japanese story, but only the translation. Still, you won't catch me reading it, thank you. Number 12. 
the great Omar book. When it comes to cursed books, it's always nice when people go to the effort of making them look good. Sangorsky and Sutcliffe is a very well-known bookbinding firm in London, specializing in a kind of ornate, Middle Ages-esque craftsmanship, binding books in intricate leather, studded with real gold, jewels, and precious stones. Obviously, their most famous work was the focus of this entry, the great Omar book. It also links to a very strange story, naturally, commissioned by Sotheran's bookshop, Sangorsky and Sutcliffe were tasked with binding a copy of The Rubiat of Omar Khayyam in a most glorious manner, no matter the cost. Free of restraint, the binders went above and beyond to make the book as gorgeous as it could possibly be, adorning the cover with three golden peacocks, complete with over a thousand jewels. When the book was finally completed in 1911, the plan was to ship it to New York and put on display for all the public to admire it. But this is where the problems began, as the ornate and hefty book demanded costly customs fee, something Southerns refused to pay. The bookshop instead sent the book to be auctioned, where it sold to an American man for less than half of its initial cost. The American hoped to ship the book back to America, but his intended ship sailed without collecting its cargo. Forced to take his second option, the American packed his book up on a soon-to-be sailing luxury liner and began thinking about what to do with it when he reached America. That liner was the Titanic, and its sinking took this legendary book and its new owner with it. But because this story wouldn't be complete without one final twist of fate, one of the bookbinders died weeks later while trying to save a woman from drowning. If only they had Etsy and eBay back then. Number 11. The Ripley Scroll. For centuries, alchemists have sought out an elixir to bestow eternal life on the user because obviously life is too short for wrinkles. For centuries they failed, but one allegedly came closer than most. Easily the most renowned alchemist of the 15th century, George Ripley's work was celebrated by everyone from Pope Innocent VIII to Robert Boyle and even Sir Isaac Newton. Then in the 17th century came the Ripley Scroll, an alchemical treatise filled with cryptic images, legends and verse that may or may not provide a guide to eternal life. We don't really know which. There are only 23 known copies of the Ripley Scroll, with some on display in museums and exhibitions around the world. But despite the scroll harboring his name, Ripley was long dead by the alleged time of the creation for this scroll. Naturally, some take this as a sign that his guide to eternal life truly works, though some are less convinced. The scroll's cryptic guide is mostly told through strange images, including a moon balancing on the Serpent of Arabia, which is biting itself and allowing blood to spill onto a globe. The scroll, to summarize, is not unlike a Monty Python creation. It's surreal, colorful, and generally kind of nuts. While many scholars appreciate that colorful insanity, the scroll has opened many questions for occult obsessives. Is it possible that this scroll really does hold the secret to eternal life? And if so, how on earth do we read it? The answer is, who the heck knows? Number 10. Lesser Key of Solomon Generally speaking, any book with a sinister sound in Latin title is one you should probably not go near on a dark night. This book, also known as Clavicula Salominis Regis, is a 17th century collection of spells that primarily focus on the summoning of demons and spirits. So again, probably not a good choice for a bedtime story. Made up of five separate books, The Lesser Key of Solomon is a compilation of older materials exploring the world of demons and occult spirits inhabiting other planes of existence. One specific version of the book also includes a section that encourages the reader to summon angels to protect the conjurer from the spirits and demons they awaken. Just a word of note, it's never a good sign when you're encouraged to get some protection before attempting the very thing the book is about. That's usually a bad sign. Later translations of the book attempted to shift the focus from demon summoning and incantations to a more philosophical and psychological reflection. But I think we all know that if you go searching for an ancient Latin spell book, you're probably not going to be looking for some quiet reflection. Just my take. Number nine. The Grand Grimoire. Of course, those familiar with magic or even just shows about witches will know that there are two very different types of magic, the general or casual kind and black magic. Black magic is notorious for its connection with the devil and his underworld friends, often linked to Satanism and other factions that believe in the power of Satan. The Grand Grimoire, then, is a book entirely composed of black magic spells and incantations, all with the intent of summoning Lucifer and making a deal with the devil, because we all know how harmless such a thing is. The book itself is broken into two parts, the first concerning itself with the actual act of summoning a demon and forcing it to do one's bidding. The second is much more dangerous, focusing on the techniques required to make a deal with the demon and gain the power of control over the spirit. Of course, anybody with a basic knowledge of stories involving deals with the devil will know that it doesn't always go the way of the deal maker. Satan is a shrewd negotiator and he loves the small print more than most. The book is popular with Wiccans and Satanists who believe that the contents allow them to communicate with and control demon spirits and even the dead. 
but the biggest question is always whether it's worth signing your soul to the devil for even a little bit of temporary success. Who am I kidding? Most of us are going to hell anyway. Sign me up. Number 8 Catcher in the Rye It may seem odd to consider Catcher in the Rye a never read kind of book considering that it's been an admittedly controversial staple of high school reading for many decades. Still, while many herald it as a literary masterpiece and a must read, it's hard to ignore the fact that the book has been linked to several notable murders and assassinations throughout history. Most famously, Mark David Chapman, so identified with the central character of Holden Caulfield and his desire to preserve the innocence of children that he shot and murdered John Lennon, likely to preserve his innocence through death in a similar way. Chapman was arrested with a copy of The Catcher in the Rye that contained a note. This is my statement, Holden Caulfield. Years later, in 1981, a botched assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan led police to find a copy of the book inside John Hinckley Jr.'s hotel room. While many of these killers were likely already mentally unstable, it's hard to ignore the links to J.D. Salinger's book. What exactly is it about Holden Coldfield's story that inspires people to take action and kill others? We may never know, but there's clearly something about the book that unlocks a sinister side to these people. Number 7. The Orphan Story A 14-year-old Spaniard leaves Granada and heads to America in search of fortune, only to rebound through multiple instances of violence and splendor in the Spanish Empire. This is the plot of a 400-year-old novel known as The Orphan Story, a book so legendary cursed that its publishing is nothing short of a miracle. Written sometime between 1608 and 1615 by a Spanish Augustinian friar named Martin de Leon y Cardenas, the orphan story was intended for publication in 1621. But that never happened, likely because its author feared the consequences of publishing such a violent book while pursuing a career in the church. But in 1965, a Spanish academic discovered the manuscript and began investigating the mysterious story. As it turned out, previous efforts to get the story published had ended abruptly, with the enthusiastic publishers dying of disease, perishing in car accidents, and worse. Again, you'd think this would be a pretty clear sign to stay away, but apparently not. It's not known what happened to the academic who found the book, raising even more questions about the potential curse. But in 2018, the book was finally published thanks to work by Peruvian academic Belinda Palacios. For now, it seems, the curse has been broken, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't return. Number 6. The Book of the Sun of Gnosis While the Picatrix is regarded as the handbook of magic, the Book of the Sun of Gnosis must be considered just as influential. Banned almost entirely since its initial discovery, this 13th century spell book focuses almost exclusively on using magic to achieve esoteric spirituality, a kind of elite method of communicating with spirits from the other world. For many occultists who read it, this book is considered one of the most powerful grimoires in all of the libraries, so probably not a coffee table book. The story goes that the book's author, Ahmad Imin Ali al Buni, was so focused on accumulating knowledge that he essentially essentially shut himself off the world to study. Spending centuries traveling, Al Buni found manuscripts exploring black magic allowing him to write this grimoire. After his death, at the age of 102, the book began traveling around his village. Outraged about its contents, profoundly religious neighbors began ripping pages from the book until the decision was made to ban it altogether. How times change, eh? While the book continues to be controversial, some occultists still herald it as one of the most powerful grimoires available. To this day, there have been multiple reports of the book inspiring murders as a result of spells and incantations gone wrong. It doesn't feel an exaggeration to say that this is an incredibly dangerous text. Number 5 Cursed Babylonian Tablets Long before we got more Santas and Christmas lists, the Greco-Romans found a way to get what they wanted, cursed tablets. A cursed tablet is a thin sheet of lead with text carved on in tiny letters and hidden somewhere in the nearby environment. The purpose, naturally, was to ask the gods, spirits and the dead to curse the living they despised for whatever reason with some kind of unpleasant action. Tis the season indeed. Predating the occult art of voodoo, the Greco-Romans would often use pieces of their targets hair or clothes to help the spirits find their targets and impose their will. In what is a savvy bit of business strategy, the Romans, often prepared by mass-producing tablets with blank spaces for customers to carve the name of their intended target. The tablets typically followed a similar pattern, 
featuring the name of the target, their crimes, and the desired action to befall them. It was believed that by offering the dead this opportunity, their spirits would rest peacefully upon completing the revenge. It's a nice way to justify such a cruel act, I guess. Intriguingly, many of the recovered curse tablets refer to court cases, casting a curse on the opposition in hopes that they forget their words or generally fail, etc. So basically, curse tablets were just a very early version of Twitter. Number 4. The Necronomicon While the Necronomicon began life as a creation of legendary horror author H.P. Lovecraft, it's somehow gone on to become an entirely real thing in its own right. Making its debut in a 1924 short story, The Hound, the Necronomicon soon found its way into the works of other authors, something Lovecraft was pleased about, believing that it lent the book a background of evil verisimilitude. But while Lovecraft insisted that the Necronomicon was an entirely invented bit of fiction, many continue to believe that it was in part based on a real book of some variety. There have been many reports of books claiming to be the real Necronomicon, with almost all of them revealed to be hoaxes and pranks. However, in the late 1970s, the line between real and fake got very blurred, as an author known only as Simon published a translation of the real Necronomicon. The book contained no ties to Lovecraft's work, instead relying on Sumerian mythology to develop a sinister and detailed history of magic. Since its publication in 1980, the book has never gone out of print and is now widely known as the most popular version of the Necronomicon in history, largely due to its convincing contents. While many continue to insist that the Necronomicon is a work of fiction, the question of whether or not there is genuinely nothing otherworldly contained within its pages rages on. Occultists and paranormal fans continue to speculate on Lovecraft's detailed exploration of a world filled with dark magic. And who's to say they're wrong? Number 3. The Codex Gigas The Codex Gigas is one of the largest and generally strangest books in the world. Measuring an incredible 36 inches, the book is a compilation of medieval texts containing multiple books within its binding. But most interesting, the book is also known as the Devil's Bible. Not because it was the devil's copy of the Bible, but well, you'll find out. While the title literally translates to Giant Book, the Codex Gigas is perhaps more well known for a unique and unforgettable illustration hidden at its center, offering no real explanation for its inclusion. At the heart of this book sits a full page color illustration of the devil. There is no context for the image, nor is there any real justification or reference to it. It's just there. If you have any idea why, feel free to comment below. In the 16th century, the Swedish army stole the book from the Romans during the Thirty Years' War. Ever since, researchers have been looking for answers as to how or why the devil found his way into what is otherwise just a compilation of books. But of course, there are no answers to be had. It's just one of those strange things. Seriously, drop some theories in the comments, because this one is straight up weird. Number 2. The Exorcist Famously one of the most, The Exorcist is well known for being one of the most difficult and cursed film productions of all time. But as it turns out, the book itself was inspired by a real life case that honestly sounds even more sinister than anything that could have happened on set. While studying at Georgetown University in 1950, author William Peter Blatty heard a story about a traumatic demonic possession, an exorcism that took place the year before. The story goes that in 1949, a Maryland family began experiencing many odd experiences following the death of their spiritualist, Aunt Harriet. The family noted that whenever their young child was nearby, furniture would start moving or levitating on its own. Yikes! Obviously worried, the family invited a Lutheran pastor for help, who in turn encouraged for a visit from a Catholic priest. The boy was then subdued to multiple exorcisms, several of which failed by this point. I would have been long gone! Inspired by the story, Blatty set out to write The Exorcist, using the details of the family to influence his storytelling. Now well regarded as the scary book of all time, it's not a book that is particularly easy to read when you know it's based on a true story. If I ever see a levitating bit of furniture, I'm leaving the country. Number 1. Munich Manual of Demonic Magic By now it should be apparent that Latin titles usually mean something very sinister is lurking inside, but just in case you haven't taken that on board, here's another. The Munich Manual of Demonic Magic, or to use the original title, Liber Incantonium Exorcism Liber Incantatonium Exorcismorium et Fascinatonium Verianium is a 15th century spell book focusing on demonology and necromancy, or if you're not into magic, summoning demons and also the dead. Of course, what makes this grimoire stand out above all others is its complete dismissal of angels. Where other spell books encourage the use of angels for protection, the Munich Manual 
operates purely on black magic and exorcisms, trusting that the reader is more than willing to risk everything for a little fun. Written by a German magician, the book focuses on three kinds of magic and the demons for each, illusionist, psychological, and divinatory. Illusionist magic makes the target see things that aren't there, like unicorns. Psychological magic is about controlling people's minds or desires in a kind of power play. And divinatory magic is focused on taking information from the past or future. All of them frankly sound like things I never want to experience. The demons included in the Munich Manual include some of the most sinister and dangerous figures in occult lore such as Beelzebub and Paimon, making this easily one of the most dangerous and risky magic books in the world, especially without angels. Which of these books would you consider a worthy risk? And are there any books you'd consider never reads? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.